What was that? I just tried to give you an imitation of an emotional state that I find myself in quite often, and I, <laughs> and I suspect you too. Here's what happens. Um, I hear something from a friend or on the news that triggers me, that I find interesting or frightening. It can be anything about climate science, about GM crops, about the situation in Pakistan, about the financial sanity, uh, safety of banks, anything. And so I go on the web. And um, I start feeding it a few search terms. I start reading and clicking away. And about 45 minutes into my research, I look up from my screen because I realize something terrible is happening. After all this information, I'm actually more confused. And so I go, ah! <sighs> now, what I want to talk to you here about is a potential solution to this problem. And I know this is very ambitious to think that you can expand or reinvent the inf information infrastructure. Then again, this is the third millennium, as you may have noticed. This is the internet age. Everything is changing, including change itself, it seems. And so why would the collection, synthesis, and presentation of information remain the same? Makes no sense. My potential solution to this problem is share your learning curve. As it happens, online. Share your learning curve. I'm going to drill these four words into your heads over the next 15 minutes. Why? I think we have a growing problem. Uh, the world is becoming ever more interconnected and ever more technologically advanced. And as a result, complexity is forever going up. And so there's this increasing divide between insiders about complex issues and outsiders. And I think we need to build bridges between them. You can't let, leave energy to the energy companies and the insiders. And you really can't leave finance to the banks. Share your learning curve as it happens online. Now, how, this, how might this work? Um, why don't I take you through my learning curve that finally led me to the idea of sharing your learning curve? Yeah, that was meta. So some of you may have missed this one. <laughs> Let me tell you again. I, I didn't wake up one day and think, oh yeah, let's share our learning curve. I went through a learning curve. Three points. And one was this, when pictures like this began to appear. Uh, this is September 15, 2008, failure of Lehman Brothers. These people are the masters of our universe. They are bankers. And they suddenly did not, did not look like the masters of our universe anymore. They actually looked like the rest of us. They were panicked. Uh, they were taking their belongings out of the building of Lehman. And I was panicking with them because I suddenly realized, is my money safe? So what do you do? This is the third millennium. Um, I went online, fed a few terms into my search engine, started clicking and reading away, and about 45 minutes into my research, I looked up from the screen because I realized what was happening, and I'm going to need your help here. After all this information, I was actually more confused. So I went... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not bad at all. And then it occurred to me, why isn't there a sort of a book or a website or something where somebody says, look, yours, stop whining. Um, I was where you were six, six months ago or six years ago. And I was at zero. I understood nothing about the world of finance and whether my, my, your money was safe. And from then on, I went through this learning curve. And why don't you come along on that learning curve? And that seemed sort of a good idea. But I'm European, so I did nothing. Instead, <laughs> that's... Thank God for Americans. Um, <laughs> so then I came across this thing, the electric car. And um, it kind of it triggered me. I was like, wow, this, is, this could bring oil independence and clear, clean air in our inner cities. That um, seems like a good deal. So I got on the web, and um, well, I went through the whole thing, and uh, because there were there was no answer to the question, is it a good idea? There were highly complex technical reports, and then there were opponents and supporters shouting back and forth. And again, I thought, wow, why don't I 
persuade my paper to give me a column in the Saturday edition where I'm going to track my learning curve. And I'm just going to start at zero and say, readers, I don't know anything about electric cars, just like you. And over the next 12 months, I'm going to document my intellectual progress towards an answer to the question, is it a good idea or not? Why don't you come along? And I don't know, are, they, are there any journalists, writers here? Yeah, it is liberating. It is so fantastic. Let's not crap on the traditional media because they perform an invaluable task in our information infrastructure. But it is just fantastic to do journalism, not about the news, but about your own curiosity. And to do a column where you can talk in the first person singular. So where you can infuse your articles with the emotions that I'm using right now, which is enthusiasm, bewilderment, frustration. <sighs> This is how you get across information. This is how you go from information to understanding. And it was just so much fun. I also came up against a number of limits. And that was basically number two in my learning curve. Because it was on paper. And so I would have these interviews with experts. And they would tell me all sorts of interesting stuff. And I would have the transcripts of the interviews, 2,000 words. And I could lift maybe three quotes from it. And that would be it. Now, that was really a bloody shame, because I was quite sure that if, if I could sort of send these transcripts to lots of experts, they could point out all sorts of interesting and unexpected aspects of the text. But it's impossible, because on paper, second millennium medium, uh, space is constrained. Even worse was that starting at zero was great. Taking the readers along was very hard, because the problem was that as I went on my own learning curve about the electric car, some of my readers were with me from the beginning, and others were jumping in midway. And so what happened was that, that, for example, buffer capacity is an essential concept in electric car. It takes you about five sentences to explain. And so I would have one column about buffer capacity. Like, look, people, this is really interesting and important. Now, the next column, would I explain buffer capacity again? That would be sort of difficult, because my loyal readers would think, yeah, 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 I know. But the midway readers would think, oh, buffer capacity, that's new. Tell me more. And so this kind of explained to me, for me why sharing your learning curve never appeared in the second millennium. Because on paper, you can't. So you need to go on the web. And as we're in Holland, everything happens 30 years later. So I could have thought of this earlier. But I was saved by the Guardian. Uh, the Guardian. Um, said, why don't you come over to London, and why don't you do a learning curve thing, uh, but this time online, digitally, and uh, not about the car, though it's interesting, um, do it about the world of finance, because it seems a bigger problem at the moment. And <laughs> yeah, they have this insight in current affairs that's unparalleled. Um, so about three months ago, I started from zero about the world of finance. and. Um, it is just so much fun to start from zero, because you don't have to pretend that you know everything, which makes classical journalism sometimes quite tedious. Um, so what I did is I started persuading bankers to talk to me. Um, and I thought, what would be a good opening question if you know absolutely nothing about the world of finance? So I thought, I'll, I'll ask them, what does a typical working day for you look like? And two, what's it like being you? And Actually, this, I thought this, this is the most accessible approach. And it began to yield results real quickly. And what made it so, so, so interesting to do is that I would post every interview on the web. So it would be like a graph where every interview would be a, a dot. And then after about 10 interviews, I would write a roundup piece, which would also appear in the paper edition, and which sort of highlighted the most important Inter uh, insights from the interviews. And of course, if you read this piece online, you could then click onto the interviews if you'd want to. These interviews just sit there because they're not wedded to the news cycle, so they don't have really a sell-by date. They can just sit there long tail and wait for their audiences. And so, for example, uh, I interviewed 10 women about uh, what it's like being them. And, um, well, it's, um, it's okay being them, they said. Um, <laughs> What I thought was really interesting is they were all against quota. They were all against positive discrimination or affirmative action. Uh, why? They said, well, a bank is like a country in civil war. 
these divisions are constantly screwing each other. Now, if you are seen as being in a position because you're a woman, then you lose in every battle in that civil war. So don't do quota. Now, this is the kind of insight from a very basic interview that I think as a, as a beginner, which I am in the world of finance, opens up this whole range of new questions. And this is what, this is what makes the web so, so promising. And I think we haven't begun to scratch the surface of what is possible now with information on the, on the web. And a, an example is, for example, this. I, I met this lady who works at a recruiter, a recruitment agency for a particular type of financial worker. And I don't know if you can read it, but she says, I never thought I'd become the person I am now. I used to work in a job where I'd help people improve their lives. These days I'm cheating, lying, manipulating, all in the name of targets. And, and she said, um, the horrible thing is I'm good at this. I'm getting bonuses. <laughs> now, this, is, this was sort of the reaction at The Guardian, um, uh, at least the among the commenters. Uh, but there were other commenters who are actually insiders, uh, because your audience of course, consists of outsiders like you, but also insiders who are interested in what an outsider may make of their world. And so within two hours, comments began to appear uh, by people who said, look, you know, this is, this is quite a dodgy outfit she's working at. And uh, the, the more established firms work quite differently. So I could pull up one of those comments and attach them to the article. So people, readers would immediately understand, all oh, right, this, this may not be representative. Then two hours later, a recruiter gets in touch and says, look, I work for a more established firm. You want to meet up? So two, or two days later, we meet up, and I'm posting the second recruiter. And so this is how a story now can sort of stretch into time. And thanks to Twitter and Facebook and all these other social media, you can, I can reach the people who were interested after the first recruiter. And they can just check whether there's a second. In, in, a, in a short while, I'll have my third recruiter, who is an ex-recruiter which is again a different perspective. And so after 10 recruiters, I'll write a little roundup, sort of connecting the major insights about this aspect of the world of finance. And this is, this is really how the thing is going to develop. And um, I think why I'm telling you all this is of course, first, uh, self-promotion. Um, <laughs> what's new? Um, but also, um, two things. One is that I'm really hoping that either one of you or online is going to take this idea and run with it and take it to the next level. I'm, I've built these ideas on the work of others. And I think I need someone else to fill in the blanks that I'm not aware of. It's, I think competition, this idea of getting out of people out of the way, is second millennium. It's third millennium is cooperation. And that would be really fantastic. Equally fantastic would be if some of you would think, well, I can do this too. I can also take a subject that I've always been interested in, but I know nothing of, and I can start sharing my learning curve. Documentary makers who are deciding on their next subject, they no longer need to throw out everything that doesn't fit their documentary, their final product. They no longer need to do their research offline, they can do it online, and include the whole process of research Basically, as a, it becomes a process rather than a product. And so imagine um, Stephen Fry or J.K. Rowling or Alain de Botton, who would say, look, this, this climate science thing doesn't seem to go away. I understand nothing. It's inaccessible. Um, I'm going to spend the next year tracking my un intellectual understanding about climate science. I would read this. And so in an ideal world, I think in, in a few years, you'll have lots of people who have taken a subject and said, look, this is what I'm going to be learning about. They go very slow. I would say go slow. Don't, if you do this thing, don't read 10 books in the first week because these 10 books land you right with the 1% insiders. Go slow. And every time you're surprised about something, that's when you learn. So keep a little notebook with your surprises. I call them light bulb moments when you're sort of wandering around in a dark parking lot and suddenly, boom, a light goes on and you think, yes, thank you, thank you. Track and document and explicitly put these moments on the web. Then invite others to reflect on these moments and on your raw material. Reflect yourself on their reflections. 
and so build an ever-continuing department store of brain food in which you are a, a sort of a personal shopper. So people who come in, you say, okay, welcome to my department store. Are you new here? Now let me give you the layout of where, where all the goodies are. Are you a regular? Please, over there, that's a new collection. And so you can have customized, long tail, interactive, documenting of a learning curve. And then, in a few years' time, I will be hearing something from a friend or on the news. I will be triggered. I will go on the web. I will start feeding it search terms. I, I will click, be clicking and reading away. And then, after 45 minutes, I will look up from the screen and I will go, yes, 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 home. <laughs> Thank you. Take your applause. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>